보지 못는 저엔티 아바수모 예라디 아바수모 예라디 아바수모 사연이 바비아코 이아바수모 오 예바수모 지세스 이아바 Sawuni yenyame, so we worship you, Lord. We worship you. Oh, we worship you, 'cause we know no other God. Oh, we worship you, Lord. We will worship you. Worship you, you alone, our God. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord, 'cause we know. Praise the name of the Lord. I just bless God for your life. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I bless God, and I know you're doing okay. This is one solar night. I've not been here for ages. I see forever. Somebody say that I haven't been here forever, forever, for a long time. But I bless God for what He's doing in your life. I thank God for your life. I pray you're doing okay. I hope everybody's fine by the grace of God. I'm doing wonderfully well. My voice is back on track. God is doing miracles, wonderful things in our lives by the grace of God. Things are going in accordance with the plan of the Almighty God, and I bless God for your life. Amen. This is a surprise. I wanted to come out on thirty first, I think. But I wasn't permitted, and I give God praise. Um, we bless God. 2020 was a year, uh, a year of a great uncertainty, a year that taught you and I to rely solely on God. A year that revealed Christ to a lot of people. A year, a year that put a lot of people in spiritual order. Praise the name of Jesus. 2020 was a year. Of preparation, a year that really, 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 really made a lot of people get up from their sleep and their slumber. And I bless God that through it all, through it all, through it all, through it all, through the challenges, through the pandemics, and through all, out all the uncertainties, the Lord kept, you know, the righteous in safety. And it's a blessing for us to be here today. Um, it's an honor. It's a joy. It's a privilege. I mean, if you are alive today, it is not because you are good. It's not because of anything. It is simply a privilege to be alive, and we bless God for His doings. We celebrate Jesus tonight. I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a pleasure to be here. If I say it's a pleasure to be here, you have no idea. Hallelujah. I thank God. 2021. 2021. I wanted to come out. You know, for us to have a little word. Um, That 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 before end of the year, but as I said earlier, the Lord did not permit me. But tonight it has been a pleasure. It's been a joy. It's been the will of God for me to be here. So if you see me here, that means it is the will of God for me to be here. And I don't take it for granted. I don't take it for granted. I don't take it lightly. You you think you've missed me? I've missed you more than anything. I've missed all of you. I was fast asleep. I wanted to come out earlier, but I was fast asleep. I woke up and I said no. Whether the devil likes it or yes, I'm going to be here tonight. I'm going to be here tonight. I'm going to be here tonight. Now listen, listen and listen carefully. Um, this year is a year that will be a leading of God's spirit. A year. Um, if last year was the way it went, then this year the Lord will protect the righteous. Hear me out, and you need to write it down. 
2021, the Lord will protect the righteous. We have met a God who is so merciful that it causes rain to fall on both the righteous and the unrighteous. He causes rain to fall on both the righteous and the unrighteous. He causes the sun to shine upon the righteous and the unrighteous. We are entering now, behold, listen carefully, to a strange terrain. We're entering into a very strange, a strange season where you see that mercy of God that unbelievers take it for granted also. That mercy and the grace of God that people don't value the goodness of God and always trample upon his grace. We are entering into a place where the Lord will protect those that are his. I don't care what will happen, what is about to happen. I don't care what is ahead of humanity. But I want you to be reassured. The Bible says that tell the righteous that it shall be well with him. Tell the righteous that it shall be well with him. I will not come and stand here and like everyone else, you know, tell you that this year we shall prosper, we shall make it, we shall do this. No. Tell the righteous that it shall be well with him. There shall be divine protection, divine order, divine direction for the righteous. Praise the name of the Lord. The Lord himself in this season will protect his people squarely. We shall walk and will not be afraid. In the times of pestilences and struggles and tribulations and everything that is ahead of humanity, my dear, the only thing you need to understand, the only thing you need to know is to have a right standing with Jesus. And Father, I thank you tonight in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, I give you all the glory and adoration. Lord Jesus, you are welcome here. You are one. You are Jesus. You are God. You are the Spirit of God. We thank you for your presence in this place. Holy Spirit of God, when our Lord and Savior Jesus was leaving, he promised us that he would not leave us as orphans, that he would not leave us, but he will leave us the Holy Spirit. I call you the Spirit of truth. I call you the Spirit of hope. I call you the Spirit of peace. I call you love. I call you joy. He said he will leave you with us. And not only are you not going to dwell with us, but he will teach us into all truths. That you will be a comforter, you will be a teacher, a great advocate in such a time as this. You will be a director. Therefore, Holy Spirit, even on this earth, there is one thing that is for sure, that those that have your seal shall prevail. Therefore, tonight we welcome your presence, Holy Spirit. If ever there's anybody who would want to hear the voice of it is the Holy Spirit. If ever there's any remnant that will speak, he must speak and proclaim the words that springs from the Spirit of God. We pray in the name of Jesus, most high God, that you will increase, that I may decrease. Spirit of the true living God, I pray in the name of Jesus tonight. That nobody will hear the voice of Esther but the voice of the Spirit of God. I pray in the name of Jesus that no words of man will prevail tonight by the word of the Lord. I pray in the name of Jesus that even as hard as it may sound, as difficult as it may sound, let the world hear your voice. Let the word hear your voice. Let the world hear your voice. Let your word come with power. Let your word Come, O oh God, to transform, to renew, to restore, to revive, to direct, to caution, to rebuke, to put us aright, O oh God. If ever there's a word we would ever need, it is a word from the Lord. If ever there's a time we have yearned and hungered and thirsty for a word from you, a rumor word, it is now, Spirit of God. If ever your people will align and keep aligning and will be preparing and keep preparing for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ, it is now. If ever there's a time and a season where your people will hear a word that will put them aright, it is now. So therefore, Spirit of God, be projected tonight, be elevated tonight, be enthroned tonight, be big tonight. I hide under your wings. I hide under your power. I hide under your 
your spirit. I hide under your authority. I pray in the name of Jesus. Speak, oh God, through this empty vessel. I pray that you will fill it with your power, with your spirit, with your strength, with your might, with your presence, and with your word. And let your word come tonight. Let transformation be alive. We will not forget to give you all the glory. Thank you, Spirit of God. Emmanuel, you are with us. Your word tells us in John that in this world, we shall go through tribulations, but we should take heart for you have overcome. Thank you, Spirit of the living God. The only personality that is needed in this season, in this dispensation, in our times, in this era, in such a time as this, the only spirit that is able to knock down the activities of the Antichrist, the only spirit, the only true spirit that is able to subject the spirit of the Antichrist so that the spirit of the Antichrist is unable to operate in its totality. Uh, the spirit of truth, the spirit of God, you are the only spirit that the Antichrist fears, respects. Therefore, Spirit of God, tonight, come, O oh Holy Spirit, come. Even as you prepare your people, even as you prepare those that are yours, even as you prepare those that have your seal, help us to align. Help us. Help us. Help us. I mean, if ever there's any spirit, angels assigned, even in this end time, in the four corners of the earth, and for their duties to be, to align and to prepare the saints of God for the coming of Christ, then we pray that Lord Jesus help us to hear their voice. Even as the strange trumpet sounds, help us to hear the voice of the gathering of the saints. The voice of the preparation of the saints. The voice of the preparation of the saints. And the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let the saints of God say Amen. Beloved, hear me out. Perhaps you never know me. My name is Esther Sephora. I'm nobody. And tonight I come out in the name of Jesus. And I'm telling everybody in the name of Jesus. That there is another paradigm shift. Please understand and share this word for me. That there's a shift in the realm of the spirit. There is a shift. There's a shift. There is a shift. If you don't know, I'm telling you. I came out tonight and I have a message for somebody. That there is a shift. There is a shift. It is a season of preparation of those that are for the Lord. It is a season of separation of those that are his and those that are not his. It is a season of separation. I think I've said it here before in writing. But tonight I did not plan anything. Because I wasn't even sure whether I was going to be permitted to come out or not. In this season I pray that the Lord permit me to come out as he wills. Not my will but his will. And as the Lord permits me to come and pray that the Lord will bring out a word in season for his people. A word that will prepare his people. A word that will align his people. A word that will prepare those that are his. From day one, I have never hidden anything from anybody. I have never hidden these words, these specific words, by saying that my calling is not for everybody. That every time the Lord gives me opportunity and permission to come out, no matter how many minutes, hours, to speak to the people of God, my mission has never been for everybody. My mission on this earth is for those that are His. My mission is as if, let me explain it in a common language. It's as if I've been given a trumpet. And the trumpet is only to awake every soul with the seal of the spirit. The trumpet of God. I'm talking about my mission here. The trumpet of God is not for everybody. My mission is to awaken every 
every soul who has the seal of the Spirit of God. Therefore, it's not everybody that will hear the word of God that comes out of my mouth and accept it. For sure, the Lord has made me understand that I'm not here to be accepted by everybody. And in such a season as this, the Lord has done a lot with my mission by the grace of God, ordained by Him. But it is getting to a place that we have to clarify once again for you to understand that this mission is not for everybody, but it's for every soul with the seal of the Spirit. Therefore, if you have the seal of the Spirit, perhaps you're listening to me, you may be a prostitute, you may be an armed robber, you may be a thief, you may be a liar, you may be a murderer, you may be a sinner, as you're listening to me, you may be gay and lesbian, but you have the seal of the Spirit upon you, and my mission is to blow the trumpet, and every soul that has the seal of the Spirit, that has been sleeping, will be awakened. Let there be awakening. Let there be an awakening. Let there be a supernatural awakening. Let there be a supernatural awakening in the hearts of the people of God. In order for the people of God to align. For behold the time cometh that listen. True messages, true words will be so scarce to hear. Hear me carefully. And you need to record this message and pass it on. That is why my ministry is different. My ministry is so different and it takes the spiritually inclined person to understand my purpose and mission ordained by the Lord, especially in these times of the beginning of birth pains. If someone tells you that this is Jesus will come tomorrow, you must understand that this is the beginning of birth pain. It is only the beginning. You are here, you are a player of church. You like to play church. You like to joke with the things of the spirit. You are here without the spirit of God. The word of God cannot be decoded. This word of God you see is not a paper. I don't care how many Hebrew schools you go to. I don't care theologian schools you go to. Without the spirit of the living Jesus Christ, you will never understand it. Because it is divinely encoded. It is divinely encoded. It is divinely encoded. It takes the Spirit of God to decode it. That is why there's a, I always say, there's a, a company in Ghana, Africa, they are called Decoder or something. The TV that they used to watch is called Decoder. The Spirit of God, when it comes to the Word of God, is a decoder. Please hear me out. That is why my mission is not for everybody. Whether you like it or not, you can take your time and do hundreds and fifty thousands of uh, uh, Facebook video and live messages concerning what we speak here and condemn us. It is not ordinary. Our words do not come from our own. We're not here to pamper you into your sin. We are not here to make you comfortable in your sin. We are not here to make you think that entering heaven is easy. When the Spirit of God is so easy. But without the Holy Spirit, it is not easy. Hear me out. Heaven, to enter paradise with the Holy Spirit, it is so easy. But without the Holy Spirit, it is not easy. And the Lord has made it clear even on this air to set an example for you that if you are leaving Africa to go to abroad, the whole process is not easy. It is simply a reflection of how entering into paradise is like. When you're entering into America or UK without a proper visa, you cannot enter. You need a proper visa. So it is in the realm of the spirit. You want to enter paradise without the proper visa, you will not be able to enter. So we will not come and stand here and tell you what you would want to hear. We come here and we say what the Spirit wants us to say. Tonight on this note, I come here and I remind you once again, as led by the Spirit of God, that there is a paradigm shift. 
and even 2021 it's making it clearer and it's making it clearer and it's making it clearer i see a lot of people talk about the vaccine and all that i don't have much to say to you but i want to speak to every soul with a seal of the spirit if you don't have the seal of the spirit fear will sit on you like a car fear the dictator will tell you what to do. Somebody asked me one day. Somebody asked me that sister Esther. What is the meaning of this? What is this? Is this to protect the vaccine? The, 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 uh, to protect the thing that is happening in our days? Listen carefully, let me talk to you. You that are sleeping. And I simply said, this thing means shut up. What you see, this means shut up. Listen to me carefully. And ask the Lord. This means what? Shut up. I tell you what to say. I tell you how to live. I tell you who to go, who to go and visit. I tell you where to go to. Beloved, hear me out. I'm not ashamed to tell you that the dictator is here. If you see a dispensation where this very thing that has not allowed us to breathe properly has been the savior, you must understand that there's a paradigm shift. That is the meaning of what to put on. It means shut up. I tell you what to do. I tell you how to live. I'm going to tell you how to live here. When to leave your house. The jobs to do. And I'm going to tell you and control you. I will control you. I control what you eat. Very soon I will control where you sleep. Very soon I will control where you go. Even in your travel, I will control you. I will control who you will serve. This, very soon, is going to be a one world order, a new order. And you will realize that everything is a shift. And they will tell you who to worship, who to serve, and when to serve. We are working. Praise the name of Jesus. So don't get too excited. I want to say something. Please hear me out. Chemically, biologically, scientifically, we're supposed to take in oxygen and give out carbon dioxide. That is how humanities will have been created by Almighty God. In His wisdom and in His infinite wisdom. That whether you are president, you are king, you are lawyer, no matter your accolades, you take in oxygen. And you breathe out carbon dioxide. In other words, without breathing in oxygen. It's just a matter of time you may not be able to survive. When there is a disability somewhere, you see that anybody that takes in so much oxygen begins to get um, hypoxic. And the people that experience this is called the COPD patients. The COPD patients. When there's a problem with your lungs, Instead of you taking in a lot of oxygen and bringing out carbon dioxide because of the disability of the lung, if you take in more oxygen, you become hypoxia. You, you, become, you begin to take in and hold on to the oxygen. And it begins to be toxic even to your system. You have to be careful. But for a normal person, you can never tell me that I breathe in my, C, my, my, my CO2 and I'll be better. 
we have held on to our oxygen and breathing in our own CO2 from March 2021. Hear me carefully. A lot of us have been breathing a CO2, taking it in for a long time, about eight to nine months as we speak. And the more we do this, it has weakened a lot immune system. Because all you do daily is to breathe in your own breath that comes out of you. And you, you instead of you breathing in the oxygen, you keep on breathing in your own. Of course, your immune system will be weakened. You'll be washing your hands from much more than necessary. Because even the dirtiness on our hands and in our body is good for our system. If you don't know, go and check it. Our immune system becomes stronger and fights it. God in his infinite wisdom has created us this way. Now the dictator is telling us, you and I, that we must wash our hands more, that we must keep breathing in our oxygen more, because this is what will protect us from something. Mm. And has brought us something that we will inject in our body that will contradict with our DNA created by Almighty God. If you check up at me, you are not properly, we are the human race. Where is the Lucifer race coming from? What race is it? How long is it going to be for us to see these characteristics of this Lucifer race? Because it's something people are taking in. And very soon the characteristics of the Lucifer race is going to come out. I'm speaking to those in the spirit. That is why I will never come in here and tell you fallacies. I tell you what? Research. Because if the enemy will get you and I, they use research. Therefore, it's about time you sit down and do a research. It is not what someone is telling you. But you need to sit down and ask the spirit of God and also do a thorough research. Obviously, this is Christmas season. Obviously, this winter season. Obviously, this winter season, a lot of immune systems are already weak. Because our immune system has been programmed to be weak from March. And because of the high radioactivities that are going on, where a lot of us, our phones, are controlled by this 5G. You see, which this it has high radioactivity stuff that affects our body also. So obviously put that in perspective. And also think about the fact that you see, you have been wearing, breathing in your own air for a long time. Therefore your immune system is already weak. It is all programmed. You've got into a place where they can shut this page down. It's not a problem. But I want you to come to your senses a little bit. Every winter time, of course, it's a season where people get lots of cold. But this season has been pre-arranged for a long time. This time it's worse. I cannot tell you here about the state of our hospitals. And it is not because someone told me, but because of what I see personally. So I'm not here to tell you what the media is saying. I'm here to tell you the mind of Christ and I'm here to tell you what by the grace of God is giving me opportunity to see it with my eye so that I can tell you to align with the Lord Jesus Christ. It is only the unrighteous who is afraid. It is only those who do not know Jesus that are afraid. You think, you see, beginning, of course, that is how they've been operating for a long time. You need to study the system. 
and study how they operate. You need to think outside of the box. That is why, because Jesus knew that we need wisdom in all things. So the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Hear me carefully. Hear me very, very carefully. So everything happening, in my opinion, is pre or dead already. Long time. Long time. It is just being executed. So don't follow blindly. Don't follow blindly. I don't care how many doctors, I don't care how many people come out and tell you about how good a vaccine or whatever is. They are not God. Those that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. So gain wisdom in all you're getting. If there's anything that is the most powerful vaccine as we speak in our dispensation, I can assure you without a doubt, I don't have an iota of a doubt that the greatest vaccine needed in this time is Jesus Christ. If there's anything you put in a bottle and drink it every morning after the evening is Jesus. Yes. Please. It is a season of preparation and it's a season of separation. In the midst of it all, the Lord Jesus, by the help of the Holy Spirit, is aligning and gathering those that are His. It is the Lord Jesus Christ who was able to kill about 23,000 Israelites overnight. It is the same Lord Jesus. Understand that you see, majority don't know Jesus anyway. Majority do not know Jesus. I'm not talking about church goers. I'm talking about those that have the seal of the Spirit of God upon them. Tonight, I did not come here to tell you about religion. I came here to tell you about relationship with Jesus. Very important, hear me out. So, in the beginning of everything, they have told you and affirm you and, and encourage you that it's not going to be mandatory. But I see it as mandatory. It's coming. It's just a matter of time. I also see them saying that, you know, children are not going to be vaccinated. But again, I see it coming. Children are going to be vaccinated. They're after a race. They're after you. They are after you. Therefore, they cannot do anything good for your system. The devil has from foundation of the earth has not got anything good for nobody. It is not today that the devil will have something good for you. Praise the name of Jesus. I'm not ashamed to tell you this. I don't know how long we have on this social media thing. That is why we don't put our hearts in these things anymore hear me out therefore anytime I come here I pray the spirit of God will speak what he wants his people to hear so that his people will align you need to align with the will of God and perhaps you've never heard this before if you are here and you intend to live in abroad then you need to begin to it's a good season that you see the Bible says that and Joseph got that food so that when when time came that there was no food, they had food in the storehouse. And wherever you are going and running to, understand that this thing is global. It is going everywhere, but the Lord will protect every soul that is His. This thing is global. So the problem is not you running. The problem is who are you running to? Are you running to Jesus? Are you running in the arms of the Lord? Or you're simply running out of fear? Ask yourself. So the problem as we speak is not the running. The problem is who do you have in your heart and 
Where are you running to? Whose arms are you running into? Because there's no place to hide. Jesus spoke to a lot of people in parables. Hear me out. The beautiful thing about Jesus is, and that is why I love to sing this song. You are bigger than what people say. You are bigger than what people say. You are good. You are kind. Bigger than what people say. He can be a Jehovah, my man. He can be a Jesus in his infinite wisdom will protect every soul that is his. I don't care where you live. I don't care where you're hiding as I speak by the spirit of God. I don't care where you are at the moment where this video finds you. I want you to be reassured. I want you to be empowered. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be so reliant on Jesus. The Bible says that he did not give us a spirit of fear, but of power and of sound mind. The Lord will protect every soul that are his and even everything that comes out of you. The righteous in this season will be protected. And one of the divine things that amazed me about Jesus is this, that the righteous will be led by the Spirit. The righteous will be led by the Holy Spirit. Not by men, but by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. This is a season for the righteous. I, I, I have no doubt about that. That is a season for the righteous. I don't care of the famine. I don't care of the pestilences. I don't care of the tribulations. I don't care how many people are going to lose their lives for Jesus. Beloved, if we lose our lives for Jesus because of the gospel, then blessed are we. I'm not afraid of he who destroys the body, but he who destroys both the body and the soul. So we have confidence in Jesus that no matter what he is with us, he'll be with us even until we see him face to face. So I don't come here to give you a message of fear. I came to give you a message of hope. A child of God, hear me out. I came here to give you a message of encouragement. I came here to give you a message of what? Hope. That the righteous will be protected and nothing will be for the righteous. And in this dispensation, anybody who is able to kill the righteous because of for Christ's sake, my dear, you need to clap for the person because what at all is here. But the message in this season is this, that there's a separation and there's a preparation. The Lord is preparing those that are his. I see the Lord separating the sheep from the goat. You see, some are goats. Some are goats. Some are goats. They jump around and hop around like goats. They, they are unable to be tamed. Unable to be directed. Unable to, to listen to the voice of God and obey. Jesus said that my sheep hear my voice and they obey me. You see, so the Lord is separating the sheep from the goat. It is this season that we are in. And the Lord, even in this season, is preparing those that are his. Hallelujah. And the Lord is even in the, in the quest of preparing those that are his. I also see the, uh, the, the, the great, uh, what is it, falling away, that masses will fall away. And masses that will fall away never belong to Jesus already anyway. There's going to be a great fall away, you know. Many people will compromise, already compromising. Not because of anything, because they cannot hear the voice of God, because they don't know Jesus. It is a season that will expose the spirit that has been controlling you all this while. You go to church every Sunday morning, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday to Friday. But it's a season that the spirit that has been controlling you all this while will be, will be exposed. Mm. So it is my prayer that the spirit of God will help us to align with the will of God. Before I go, I'm not going to leave you, but I want us to check scriptures also, amen. I want us to read scriptures 
uh, these are not seasons to, I always say this, these are not seasons to um, argue with anybody, hear me out. These are not seasons to take your time off your busy schedule and be answering foolish conversations and, and foolish arguments and foolish, you know, whoever, hear me out. Whoever does all these videos and all these insults on social media, YouTube, wherever, please, it's not a season to answer anybody. You are not answerable to nobody apart from Jesus Christ. Through it all, please make sure that you are aligning with the will of the Father. Set your house in order. Set yourself apart for Jesus. Walk in the holiness and in the righteousness of God. Walk in the purity of God. You know, be very discerning. Be in the spirit. If you can't every day, if you the days you cannot, you can do from 6 to 12. Be in fast, you know, consistently seeking the face of God. Consistently, I'm not saying you should stop yourself, but I'm saying something that consistently seeking the face of God so that every time you will align yourself with a will of the Father so that the Spirit of God will tell you what to do. It is the season where the Lord will, He Himself, the Spirit of God will direct the people of God. It is a season where people will have a direct encounter. Direct, direct direction, direct encounters. I'm not talking about these fake, fake encounters, no. I'm talking about divinely. The Lord will align His people. The Lord will direct His people. The Lord will show His people what to do. It is a season where the people of God need to align with the will of God. It is not a season to battle. The enemy will also cause the church to battle with the church. You see, I see also, it's as if a parasite is fighting. Um, there's, I always say this thing, but it's going to be very rampant also. And I need you to write this down. So that you take notice of it. So when it's coming, you don't you don't keep your eye on it so much. Don't waste your energy on it. Uh, the devil is going to cause, you know, instead of an outsider to fight the body of Christ, the body of Christ will begin to fight the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ will, is like a parasite, you know, parasite fighting against itself. There's this disease that it, it causes the, the immune system, the thing that is supposed to build the immune system to fight it. You see, and same way, uh, the enemy will cause this thing to be happening in the body of Christ. And it's all to take our attentions off God. It's all to take us off track. Please, don't take notice of these things. Do not take notice of these things. And uh, if you're here and perhaps you see that they are bringing this thing out and they're saying, now there's coming, we're going to have peace. Peace is coming. We have found that. We have found this, that, that. We have found, it's as if they are almost saying that we have found a cure. And everything is going to be fine. Just take this thing. No, no, no. The Bible says that there shall be a sudden, you know, a sudden distraction. Please align yourself with the will of God. Align yourself. Be holy. Be righteous. Get deeper with God. If you are that person that has never taken time to ask many questions, go before God tonight after this and begin to seek the face of God and ask the Lord Jesus why you're here and what he requires of you and what are the prerequisites to enter paradise it is very important. These are not times to, again, you know, battle each other and fight each other and uh, waste your precious energy and times. Uh, our energies must be used to wait upon the Lord to gain more strength and to also hear from the Spirit of the living God because, beloved, there's no fear in Christ. And I have no doubt, again, once again, let me repeat it for you, that there's no fear in Christ. There's no fear. Hallelujah. Amen. There is no fear in Christ. There is no fear in Christ. Somebody is asking, what are we going to do? I'm not going to tell you what you're going to do because as I speak, every righteous person knows what to do. Everybody that has the seal of the Spirit upon them knows what to do. So um, it is very important. The key is for you to align your will with the will of the Father. Every righteous person who have a right standing with the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, who walk in the righteousness of God, who, you know, is spiritually inclined, who has a deeper uh, relationship with Jesus, knows what to do in times and seasons as this. And uh, it's very important that you go before God and then you make a wise decision based on the leading of the Spirit, not your own personal gain, not your own comfort, but be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. I want us to read, we've read this again, but uh, be led for us to read it again. Amen. Matthew chapter 24. Then Jesus went out and departed from the temple and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. So Jesus went out and departed from the temple 
and his disciples came up to show him the buildings of the temple. Jesus was in the temple. The disciple comes out of the temple. The disciples now begin to point out the temple, the buildings to him. In other words, the, the, the disciples begin to bring his attention on the temple. Mm -hmm. And Jesus said to them, Do you not see all these things? As shortly I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another that shall not be thrown down. Not one stone will be left here upon another that will be thrown will not be thrown or down. Mm, what do we use to build? It is a stone, isn't it? And Jesus was telling them, now not one of these stones will be left here like that. Beloved, we are not meant to stay here forever. Ah, you are that are listening to me that you're so proud with what you have, the accolades, the achievements. And I'm educated, I've went to university, I've done my master's, I've done my PhD. Do you understand me? These things that you brag about. I'm here to see anybody in mortuary who's holding their certificate of, of what degree or diploma or whatever certificate they have that they hold in their hands in the mortuary. These things are meaningless after it all. After it all, after all is said and done, beloved, fear God. Walk in his ways, obey his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man. Praise the name of Jesus. So Jesus said that, do you not see all these things? So assuredly, I say to you, not one stone shall be left here upon another. That shall not be thrown down. That shall not be what? Thrown down. Beloved, let's, let's flip it on the other side. I said something that you see, we are all the image of God. None of us have been created to live forever. If you don't know, I'm telling you today, when you see people die and you are quick to write RIP, be very careful because tomorrow it can be my turn. It can be your turn. If you see people you saw yesterday and today you call them, where are you? And they tell you, oh, we are in the mortuary. You see, we just brought her here. The body is here. The person is dead and gone. Don't be surprised because the day is coming that we're going to see the same thing. We are not meant to be here forever. So, oh sinner, that is proud. You arrogant. You proud. You cannot man. Hear me out. Do not be so excited by hoarding all these things. And you are so proud because you've managed to hoard all these things. And for you, your joy, your pride, your God has become your money. Your money has become your God. And your God has become your money. Your riches, your, 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 your fleets of cars and buildings and all these things is what you take pride in. Then I feel sorry for you. I feel sorry for you. Because remember, when you're dying and going, you'll not take one at all. So what do we ought to do? We must fear God and walk in the ways of the Lord. We must live a holy and a righteous life. Christianity goes beyond what you think. It goes beyond what you see. It goes beyond the wisdom of man. And Christianity, you must understand, is a way of life. Christianity is a way of life. I always ask people, if you find Christ and truly the Holy Spirit lives in you, it's not somebody that will tell you to live a holy life. It's not somebody that will tell you the way you look. Somebody will not come and tell you how you should look. It is the Spirit of God that you claim you have in you that will tell you and convict you on how a true righteous person will look. It is not human beings that will tell you. So if the Lord gives you an opportunity and see people that comes out and tell us how the Spirit of God will want us to look as people of God, you must understand that the Lord is so loving. Because a true child of God that truly carries the presence and the power and the Spirit of God will know what to do without contradicting scriptures. Mm. Hallelujah. 3 says, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, as he segregated himself, went to sit somewhere quietly, the Bible says the disciples came to him privately or privately saying, Tell us when will these things be? Ah, Jesus now... You know, the disciples are showing Jesus these things like literally, literally showing Jesus about this building. Now, Jesus begins to speak in parables and say, A time is coming, I tell you, rest assured, I assure you that a day is coming that none, that none of these buildings, these stones that you see here, well decorated, well programmed, you know, where it looks beautiful, it looks marvelous, it looks wonderful, it looks uh, beautiful to behold. You know, it's a building that is wonderful, very, very art art articulately but, you know, built, you know, by the architect with, with wisdom. They have programmed it nicely. So it's a building that you see and you pause and you look at it and look at it again because it's beautifully done. Jesus looked at it and did not talk about the building, but talked about the stone that was used to build it. That the day is coming, not just the building, but these stones, none will be left. So today, if you look at yourself, look, 
at yourself because you are the building. I am the building. And you look because you are healthy, you are well. Because you are not sick, nothing is wrong with you. You look at your good body and you begin to be so proud and arrogant. So proud and arrogant. And you do everything and anything to yourself, to your body, thinking that you don't have a maker, that I have my own body, I do what I like with my body. A day is coming that not one of these stones will be left here. Repent. Walk in the righteousness of God. Walk in the holiness of God. For beloved, our redemption draws near. Mm. So Jesus, after saying this, the disciples, you know, was like, what is this man talking about? We're just showing you the beauty of this splendor, the splendor of this building. And now you begin to tell us that the day is coming that none of the stones will be left that has been used to build this. So the disciples were curious. When Jesus said that he went and left them and went to sit under a mountain, an olive tree, and the disciples now, out of curiosity, went to Jesus. Because how Jesus said it, it did not sink in well. They were talking literally. Jesus was talking parables, something deeper. Also, Jesus was also telling them about the crucifixion of Christ. And also, not only that, if you're here listening to me, was also reminding them that this body is not meant to live forever. We're not meant to live here forever. So if ever there's anywhere you want to make an investment, then let me get closer to you and tell you the best investment on this earth is an eternal investment. The best investment that you can do for your soul is the eternal one. You will leave everything here. You see, it is good to do life insurance. I have life insurance for my child. I do. Do you understand? But the best life insurance you can have for your children, I can have for my children, is for them to know Jesus. It's for them to do what? Know Jesus. It's for them to know Jesus for themselves. So in the days of trouble, in the days of darkness, in the days where they cannot be able to say anything, the Jesus in them that they know, the Bible says, raise up a child, you know, in the fear of God, so that when they are old, they will not de 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 depart from it. So these are times and seasons that if there's anything we can do, any investment we can do for our children, is to lead them and raise them even in the fear of Jesus Christ. That is the best investment you can do for your children. It is not this kind of place. Everything, heaven and earth will pass away. But the word of God will never pass away. This a day is coming that this small Bible, this paper will be so precious. Have you noticed that today as we speak, we live in a paperless society. It is a paper, cashless society. It is a cashless society. You don't know, I'm telling you. It is a cashless society. It is a society where we don't use cash as much. You can count how many places cash is used. Very soon, and of course, they are talking about the fact that the, this virus thing uh, will be transmitted through cash. So uh, it's becoming more cashless. Very soon, it's going to be paperless society. Already it is. And they're going to, you know, uh, bother us with this word of God. Where they'll tell you that this should not be printed anymore because it will produce gems and some hunukwa. Do you understand? A day is coming that there's coming a hunger, there's coming a thirst. It's not going to be food. It's not going to be. Uh, uh, it's not going to be water, but it's going to be the word of God. It's going to be the word of God. So if you're here, you're listening to me, please. And you don't like the word of God. You don't like listening to the word of God. Please, these are times and seasons for you to sit down. And seek the face of God. Let the word of God dwell in you greatly. I also see coming. Uh, 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 you see the, the, the. What is it called? Famine. You see the famine will come. And it will be the word of God. It will be this word of God. Uh, that is coming. Farming. It is coming on its way. I also see that a day is coming. That if you do not take the things they are bringing out on your system. In your system. If you don't take it. You will not be able to buy or sell. You'll not be able to do anything or even work. You'll not be able to do the essential things of life. Very soon, you'll not be able to travel. Do you understand? Uh -huh. You'll not be able to, tra to travel. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Please, I beg of you, be led by the Holy Spirit. So if you're here and you have a storage, these things we're talking about, it is not too long. It is not too long. Um, they've realized that people... I've come to the knowledge of these things. So things are going to be pushed rapidly. It's going to be fast. It's going to be very fast. Faster than you think. It's not too long. They're going to shut the borders. 
they will shut the borders. And if you're not, you're not vaccinated, you'll not be able to travel. Mm -hmm. You'll not be able to go anywhere. Please, I want you to put these things down and take these things in prayer. So whoever tells you that it's not going to be mandatory, is that because they are lost and spiritually blind? Please, I beg of you, hear me out. And they're after us and our children. They're going to take a lot of people. They're going to take your children off you. I'm telling you, this video is okay. You can share it for somebody. And let the Spirit of God lead you. Uh, you know, when you're in abroad, our children are not for us. Our children are for the social services. Yes, if you don't know, I want you to, again, take time and do research. Maybe uh, you don't believe what I'm telling you, but understand. Because when the Spirit reminds me, I'll tell you so that I don't forget. Your children are not yours in abroad. My children are not mine in abroad. And it will be very, very eminent very soon. A lot of children are going to be taken off their parents and they will be vaccinated by force. It won't be long. So hear me out. Be led by the Spirit of God. I'm not ashamed to tell you these things. And I want you to pray to it. But through it all, uh, one thing is for sure that the Lord will protect those that are His. The Lord will speak to a lot of people. Perhaps relocation will be one of the um, things. The Lord will gather his people. The Lord will empower his people to stand even to the end. That, that's what the Bible says. Blessed are those who are able to what, stand to the end. These are times and seasons. Not whether you agree or disagree with me. I don't care. It's just I'm telling you what, you know, I'm telling you the mind of Christ. I'm telling I'm speaking to the people of God. Whether you, you take the vaccine or not, it's your business. We're all going to stand before God and account for our lives. How we live our lives. I'm not bothered. I don't care. The spirit of this, this is some of the work we've been called to do. You know, at the end time, a lot of remnants will come out and tell you exactly what I'm telling you tonight. By the grace of God, the Lord, through the wisdom of the almighty God and by the spirit of the living Jesus Christ is reminding his people to align. But every true message will tell you that it is not to scare nobody. There's no fear in Christ. Hallelujah, because one thing is for sure, that the Lord Jesus will protect every soul that belongs to Jesus. The Lord has given me a series, a series of dreams. I don't want to come and tell you about dreams outside of God's word. Do you understand? So I don't want us to, but I want you to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen? Uh -huh. Very important. I'm not one of those people that if I always should come here and tell you revelations, I'll always have something to tell you. But I want the word of God to be your, 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 your yardstick. And then I'll chip in a little bit and I'll tell you that go and pray about it. Because whatever Jesus will show us, it is true. Hallelujah. Whatever we, we see, the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, is glorified. You know, he will not hid anything from those that fear him. So by the grace of God, we come here and uh, I repeat it for you, please. I want you to go and pray about it. A lot of people are going to lose their children. Yes, for the, yes, yes. Oh, yes. A lot of people. Um, very, very important. Families are going to be uh, separated. You know, um, uh, a lot of people. Uh, are now, these are seasons that you're going to see your real families from, from your worldly family, your biological families. So be led by the Holy Spirit. These are not seasons that you have to be ignorant. Do not be ignorant uh, of, of the devices of the enemy. Uh, they will bring a lot of, you see, they will bring a lot of adverts for you to think that this is good. It is all propaganda. Uh, read from me. I don't know. I'm, I'm not into all these theory, theory stuff. And, uh, but I, I'm speaking to the spiritually inclined people as led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. So I want you to please pray about it. Uh, it is for sure. The Lord will lead us, amen, into greener pastures. Hallelujah. The Lord will protect the righteous. And uh, even in death, he remains God. Even in, in death, he will remain God. Hallelujah. It is very important. Uh -huh. I will repeat it again that whether you believe what we say or not, by the grace of God, we're not here to impress you. We're not here to make you believe what we tell you. But even as the Spirit leads us and gives us the utterance, we say it as it is. Please go and pray about it. Very, very important. Very soon. It's not long. I don't see it as too long. So be led by the Spirit. Very, very soon. The borders are going to be shut. If you don't take vaccine, you will not be able to travel. Uh -huh. If you don't take these things, you will not be able to go anywhere. Uh -huh. So it is very important. It's very important. It's very, very, very crucial. It's very, very, very crucial. Mm, it's very important. Uh, and you see, 
Even in this season also, the Lord will divinely protect the righteous. We will not be sick. We will not be sick because um, what, will, what, will, what will make a lot of people, uh -huh, what will make a lot of people, you know, um, die or, or take a lot of lives is the fact that they'll be sick. And the healthcare system is not, you know, capable enough to cater for all. So divinely, the Lord will protect those that are his. Divinely, the Lord will protect those that are his, that your children, your sons and your daughters will not be sick. Your children will not be sick. Hallelujah. Your children, our children will be protected. I'm telling you, the Lord will preserve us that our children will not be sick. Okay? But um, always we talk about these things in depth on our Zoom so you can join us sometimes. And as the Lord leads us, we talk about it. Amen. Don't be afraid. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Be led by the Spirit of the living God. Amen. Jesus answered them. And uh, that take heed that no one deceives you. One of the main thing in this end time, even in the body of Christ, is deception. You see, a lot of you, your pastors will make you take uh, what is ahead. The, your pastors will encourage you to take it. Because if they don't encourage you to take it, they will not be able to open their church buildings. And even those church buildings, it will not be open for long. Whether when you see them, tell them that I'm telling you that even if they make people take these things for the buildings to open, a day is coming, these buildings will be desolate. So I'm telling you, tell them that already I encourage you to take it. Blind leaders. Blind leaders who follow blindly. That should tell you that after your offerings and your tithes. So go and take whatever is in your body. It's nothing. So that they can be able to, 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 to do what they are supposed to do. Just like they have forced you to put on a mask. To sit under the clock of hallelujah in the presence of God. So that the church can continue. So would they force you to take whatever the government is bringing. So that their church will continue. The fact is, are you being prepared for heaven? Are you being prepared for heaven? So go before God and have a deeper relationship with Jesus so that no man will deceive you. No man will deceive you in any way. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Ah, that's why nobody needs to like me. I'm not here to be liked. I'm here to tell people the mind of Christ that many people will take these things. The government will subsidize them and give them money and you will take it so that they are. But the congregation itself will be under war, so it will not going to be, it's not going to be too long. They'll keep reducing the people that are supposed to be there till it's finally shut. And that's why you know how the Antichrist rules. We live in the rule of the Antichrist. What is not allowing the Antichrist fully, completely, is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that powerful. Praise the name of Jesus. So be led by the Holy Spirit. Be alert, be spiritually inclined. Stop the carnality. Stop the, you know, I'll be hot, I'll be cold. We're in a season where everybody's going to come out and be preaching. And it's all to confuse people. But everybody with the seal of the spirit cannot be confused. You see, it's a season where everybody's like social media. Everybody has become a preacher. Everybody will be preaching. You see, Bible says, by their fruit, you shall know them. So know what you listen to, who you listen to, where you listen to. And prepare yourself to meet the Lord. In the midst of all the noise, take some time off. Read scriptures, begin to seek the face of God in fasting and in prayers. Align yourself with your family. Sit down with your family and make that decision. Whether you want to spend eternity with Jesus or you want to be comfortable here temporarily. Be led by the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Very, very important. Uh, as for us, there by the grace of God, whatever you need to know, we have been bold to tell you. And if I stand everywhere, I tell you the same thing. Some of you, your men of God will force you to take whatever the government will bring. They'll force you. If you don't take it, they can't start church. They can't operate the church. They can't open the buildings. They cannot. They'll be in trouble. So, uh -huh. hallelujah. So, save your own soul. Save your own soul. Save your own soul. Hallelujah. I'm not going to keep you too long. Mm, I'm not going to keep you too long. Uh -huh. So, Jesus answered and said to them, Take heed that no one deceives you. Don't let anybody deceive you. When we come here and speak scriptures, please, when you take time off, go back and sit down and, and, and cross-check scriptures. When you finish, you can also read um, Revelation chapter 13. Sit down 
and cross check it amen he said let the spirit of god speak to you and he said no let no man deceive you for many will come in my name saying i am the christ and will deceive many today everybody is preaching christ hallelujah everybody is talking about jesus if you're not careful somebody will make you feel oh Christianity, you do what you like, you go to heaven, it's that easy, you know, do what you like, you know, some of them think we're even crazy, and you know, all these things, no, be led by the Holy Spirit, hallelujah, open scriptures, sit down with your family, if ever there's a time, you know, where you read scriptures, and the Bible talks about the apostles, they used to meet one with another, they used to talk about Christ in, in homes, it's going to be like that, it's coming, it's coming again, I see it coming like that. And one of the most powerful tools the Lord we used to prepare those that are his in this end time is the little, little families coming together and, you know, dissecting God's word by the spirit of God. Dissecting God's word by the spirit of God, not by man's wisdom, but by the spirit of God. So I families will begin to come together, you know, and will sit down. So the church age is gone. I've said this, I think, from last year. And I, I, want, to, I want to emphasize and say it again. I don't care how, many, how long they open it for. The church building age is gone. Yes. So be very, very careful and know the times and season we're in. And begin to sit down by the grace of God with your family. And begin to start praying every day. At least one hour a day as a family. And in the evening, one hour as a family. Begin to sit down and begin to dissect scriptures. So that you all have the word of God in you. The greatest weapon in our days. Is the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. If you have these two with you, nobody will be able to deceive you. These are the two things you need in this end time, whether people are around you or not, whether the social media or not. These two strong and powerful things, the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. If you have this in this end time, nobody will be able to deceive you. You will not be alone. Hallelujah. And if you live by the Word of God, you will realize that you'll be all right. Wherever you find yourself, that the Lord, I'm telling you, please, so, you see all these decorated buildings, the day is coming, that is going to be desolate. Because for the buildings, they've decorated. But for the souls, it's never been decorated. So, the Lord himself, in this end time, will cause his angels just to come purposely to prepare the people of God. Sometimes, you see people preaching and all that. Some of them may be angels, you'll be surprised. Aligning the will of the Father, preparing the people that are for God. So that when he comes, he will get some and take his people with him. Amen. God himself is also bringing a lot of remnants. Hallelujah. That will not compromise. They will not tell you what you want to hear. Just to prepare those that are for the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That will prepare. The, 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 their main you know, purpose is not to take your money to do anything, but to prepare the saints for the coming of Christ. And these remnants are coming. A lot are coming. I see a lot even coming from the Islamic side. A lot of Islam, Islamic people are going to be repented because they are very radical. And that radicality, the Lord will use it in this end time, their radicality to prepare his sins. I'm telling you, you got to write it down. Okay? And be serious. If you're a man of God and you realize you failed your congregation, this is the right time to seek the face of God. Repent and walk in holiness. Without holiness, you don't see God. Every church that has not preach holiness, righteousness, repentance, holiness inside out. Please, you need to sit down, ask God again. Go before God and ask God what he requires of the body of Christ. How do we prepare the people to meet the Lord Jesus? Because if we fail in this department, there's definitely the point that you will not fail in hell. If you fail to prepare souls for the coming of Jesus and you are busy entertaining them, you sure will not miss hell until you repent because the souls are very precious to God. If the souls are not precious to God, he will not have left his throne to come and die for you and I. So if the Lord has purchased us with his blood, that is how precious the souls of the people are with, to God. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh, amen. I, amen. I, I hope and I pray somebody is being blessed tonight. Mm -hmm. uh, hallelujah. Uh, six says, and you will hear of wars and rumors of war. We've been hearing this for a long time. Uh, wars and uh, rumors of wars. For nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. You know, kingdom against kingdom we see today. Even in the body of Christ, kingdoms are raising against kingdom. This one is saying mine is correct. This one is saying mine is correct. 
kingdom against kingdom. But everybody with the Spirit of God who has aligned their will with the will of the Father, you realize that in the midst of the confusion, you are very, very settled and certain and you are okay. Amen. The Bible says that uh, and there will be famines and, and pestilences and earthquakes in various places. Not all places, but various places. So when we talk about the Lord showing us all these famines ahead coming, you must understand it's biblical. It's in the scriptures and it is coming. It is not just a fallacy. It's not a story. What we're telling you is true. It's coming. It's coming. All these are the beginning of sorrows. Then they will deliver you up to tribulation and kill you. Who told you that tribulation will come after rapture? No. They will deliver you to them and they will slaughter a lot of people. Watch this space. Amen. Be spiritually inclined. I'm not going to go deeper with that. But I want you to understand that these are the beginning of birth pains. These are beginning of birth pains. And these are times and seasons the Lord has given to you and I to align ourselves with the will of the Father. I'm not here to talk about religion. I believe in a personal relationship with Jesus. It is not time for you to be relying on the groups. It is time for you to check your life. And let me check my life. Am I in the will of the Father? It is not time for you to listen to too much noise. The noise are going to keep coming. And it's the work of the enemy to, of course, confuse the spiritually weak. Mm. To confuse the spiritually weak. If you have just known Christ, understand that these are seasons of confusion. And if you are deeply rooted in Christ, understand that these are seasons of separation. And if you are deeply rooted in Christ, understand that these are seasons of preparation. Three things you must write down. A season of confusion. A season of preparation. And a season of separation. Please let me repeat it for you. I beg you. It is a season of confusion. A season of separation. And a season of preparation. I pray that you will not be caught on our way. I pray that the Spirit of God will lead us in all truths. I pray that the power of God will rest upon His people. I pray that the Holy Spirit will lead us and speak to us vividly, evidently. I pray that He will keep us focused. Because it's a season of confusion, a season of preparation, and a season of separation. Even in the midst of these three things, according to scriptures, for the Bible says that just, in the, just as the days of Noah, so shall it be. For they were eating and drinking, being married, being given into marriage. Then the flood came. So even in the midst of the confusion, even in the midst of the preparation, even in the midst of the separation, also there are those that will adamantly live their lives normally as if nothing is happening. And things will suddenly catch them on our way. May God deliver his people. May God protect his people. May God preserve his people. May God direct his people. May God empower his people. May God reveal himself to his people. And may God have mercy on his people. And also if you're praying every day, pray for mercy. Pray for mercy for your children. Pray for mercy for your family. As for our children that are very young, even in these times and season, as you seek the face of God, Pray for them, for God to show them mercy. Let your prayer of mercy and supplication be so much. For behold, the Lord is near. Behold, our redemption draws near. And uh, it's a joy, it's a privilege, it's an honor to know Jesus. It's uh, a blessing to know Christ true and true in this season. 
and it's a blessing I to have a deep relationship with the Father even in this season um, please understand that Jesus is coming but we are in the it's like a, a beginning of birth pain beginning of birth pain birth pain but everything will go swiftly I don't know how to put it but things will go swiftly so if the Lord is leading you to do something do it quickly because things will go many things will catch a lot of people on our way many things will catch a lot of people unprepared may we be led by the Holy Spirit also we pray that the Lord give us the grace to forgive easily stop keeping malice and anger and strife but biting jealousy all these things again it is as if they've poured them you know it's like you know they, 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 it's like it's a spirit so they've poured them out this end time and so much where people will step on your toes people will make you angry people will, will slander you people will backbite you people will, will do all sorts of things lie to you lie about you you know anything just to make you upset just to dwindle your faith just to shift your focus a little bit please be very vigilant these are little little foxes that again the enemy even in the midst of it is using to to shift the the minds and of the people you know so be very very don't take notice of a lot of things you understand don't take notice uh, the other day I was saying if somebody says that my nose is big and uh, yes my nose is big leave me alone you understand uh-huh if I said trousers is not good according to scriptures you say it's good that's your business wear it we're gonna stand before God the truth has been spoken already you understand don't go about wasting your time on these people you know uh-huh we, we must stop all these things the enemy who create all this anger, strife, and all these things, just to shift our focus off these things, because uh, many will be caught on our way, many. Rapture can take place anytime also. The Lord can choose to do what He wants to do. Hallelujah. Therefore, even in the midst of it all, we must prepare ourselves to meet the Lord. We must forgive easily, apologize easily if need be. You understand? Uh -huh. We must let go. Don't put anybody in your heart. Your heart not be refrigerated. These are seasons and times that you gather your family. If you have a problem with your husband, your wife, solve it quickly. You understand? You are with someone's husband, wife. Let them go. Please save your soul for the coming wrath of God. From the coming wrath of God, save your soul. What can I say? Save your soul from the coming wrath of God. And if the Lord gives you opportunity and the Lord gives you, grant you the grace to speak the truth to people, don't stand there to wait whether they accept it or not. As you're saying, keep going. Keep going because time is not on our side. Hallelujah. Wherever you go, you speak, they accept. Bless them. If they don't accept, shake the dust off your feet and keep going. Praise the name of Jesus. Um, don't waste your time and all these. Some of them go for interviews and all these unnecessary things. Don't involve yourself in them at all. Whether they sit hundred people and discuss you and laugh at you and insult you, thank God for such opportunity for God to have caused this to happen because of his word. Your reward and my reward are in heaven. Please forgive easily. Don't let the enemy bring anybody in your heart and hate it. Please, I beg you. I beg you. The Lord is near. The Lord is near. The Lord is near. The Lord is near. A redemption draws near. I want to bless God for your life tonight. Uh, if you're here, you don't know Jesus. Uh, you don't know Jesus. Perhaps you don't know who Jesus is. This is the Son of God. He's also God. He took upon himself a human nature. Uh, he's fully God, fully man. Came to live as a man so that he will come and die. So that through his death on the cross, you and I will be saved. By the grace of God, because of the death, he, the, the, the finished work on the cross, we have been given opportunity that if only we accept him as our Lord and Savior, that we'll be saved. You understand? There's the work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So please, I beg you. I uh -huh. beg of you, you don't know Jesus, this is the passport you need, not the other passports coming out, the passport to heaven 
is to take Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior. Also, after you've taken that, you'll be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And then after you've been baptized, that you begin to live in accordance with the word of God. And then you go to a Christian and he'll tell you that this is the whole duty of man. For us to what? Obey the commandments and do the will of the Father. This is our whole duty. This is the reason why we are here. We're not here to, to get buildings and have cars and all these things. It's okay if you have them. There's nothing wrong with it. If you work hard and the Lord bless you with it, it's a blessing also. But you see, we are not called because of these things. Amen. So tonight I want to introduce Jesus to you. If you take him as your Lord and personal Savior, you're going to be saved tonight. Hallelujah. Your name is going to be written in the book of life. Amen. And even as you begin to live in accordance with the word of God, that's when you will know. Hallelujah. So you're here. Perhaps you've heard the word of God and you want to give your life to Jesus. Uh -huh. I want to give your life to Jesus. I want you to lift up your hands. Amen. I want you to lift up your hands with me. Even as we lead you to Jesus, it's a privilege. It's an honor. Hallelujah. It's an honor to take the Lord as your Lord and personal Savior. It is a joy in such a season as this. I'm reading someone's uh, thing that I saw. Okay. Very important. Uh, if the Lord permits us, we'll be coming. And if the Lord gives us any, you know, the Lord, as we come here, you see that we don't, nothing is planned. There's whatever the Spirit of God wants us to know, He will tell us in simplicity, in His will, in His wisdom. And it's not by force. You take it fine, you don't take it, that's your business. Praise God. And uh, that is the beauty of Jesus. Tonight, beloved, you want to give your life to Jesus. I don't care, perhaps you're a prostitute, you're an arm robber, you're a thief, you're a liar, you're a witch, you're possessed. You are an agent of darkness. You never thought that the enemy will use you like this. But Jesus tonight is calling you to a life of purity, a life of repentance. That if you come to Jesus, he will set you free. He will liberate you. He will set your heart free. He will set your soul free. He will save you from the coming wrath of Jesus Christ. You want to give your life to Jesus? You want your heart to be an abode for the Lord Jesus Christ? Where Jesus comes and lives in your heart, then tonight is an opportunity for you. In such a time and season as this, the, the world is really coming to an end. And the Lord is preparing those that are His. Jesus is coming for those that are His. The question is, do you want to be part of His? Do you want to be part of the people of God? Do you want to be part of those that belong to Jesus? Hallelujah. Please, I beg you. I beg you in the name of Jesus. Uh, it's an opportunity. Uh, I want you to lift up your hands wherever you are. And please with your humility, I want you to say this after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I know I'm a sinner. But I know you came to shed your blood for me. Say, Lord Jesus, even tonight, I want to take you as my Lord and my personal Savior. I want you to come into my heart. I want you to come into my heart. I want you to come into my heart. I want you to be the Lord and the Savior of my life. I want you to be my God. I want you to write my name in the book of life. From henceforth in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I want to welcome you to the body of Christ. Now it's important that you be baptized in the name of Jesus. Uh, let the Spirit of God lead you and be baptized in a flowing river. It's all part of the preparation of the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I pray that the Spirit of God, the power of God will rest upon all of us. I pray that Jesus, even each and every day, as he prepares us for his coming, will keep preparing us. I pray in the name of Jesus that the love of Jesus shed abroad in our hearts will be filled. Amen. I pray that the spirit of the living God will come upon us, rest upon us, renew, restore, revive, put us aright, prepare us for his coming. I pray that the spirit of God will awaken a lot of souls that are his. I pray that the spirit of God will speak to somebody tonight. I pray that somebody's soul will be liberated tonight in the name of Jesus. 
Hallelujah. If the Lord permits me tomorrow, I'll be here again. If the Lord permits me, I'll be here. And by the grace of God, gradually, even as the Spirit of God speaks and gives us utterance, I know that our lives will never be the same again. I want to say I love you with the love of Jesus, and there's nothing you can do about it. And please, I want you to understand that wherever you are, whatever you're doing in the name of Jesus, you need to begin to check your life, whether you're still in the faith, whether you're still in faith, whether your name is in the book of life, wherever you are, please, I want you to check. Perhaps you're a pastor, man of God, you're an evangelist, you're a pope, you're an archbishop, you're a cardinal, uh, you're an evangelist, whatever your title may be, you're an usher, you're a choir rester, you are a musician, everything you do, you do in the name of Jesus. I want you to sit down and ask yourself, if the trumpet should sound tonight, where will I spend eternity? If the Lord Jesus should come for those that are his, where will I spend eternity? Beloved, in the midst of it all, we must understand that individual people are seeing their individual rapture. If you die today, you have seen your own rapture. If you die today, if you die today, if you don't know, I'm telling you, you have seen your own individual rapture. So beloved, what do we ought to do? We must live wisely. As if today is our last day. As if right now is all we have. As if Jesus is coming now. May the Lord bless you, keep you. May his face shine upon you. I love you with the love of Jesus. Beloved, hear me out. Let love. Let there be love dwell, dwell among us. Let me sing that song. Let's sing it. Let the be love shed among us. Let the be love in our hearts. And may this love fill this nation. Cause us, so oh God. Jesus 
arms open doors so I can feel like home and there's love anymore 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 God bless you have a blessed evening have a blessed day have a blessed night I'll see you all if the Lord tarries tomorrow by the grace of God have a blessed 2021 the Lord lead the righteous even in this season. God bless you all. Bye-bye. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord.